Greetings friends, it's Alexor again. As you can tell, we have the Lightning Blizzard build. <coughs> we rain Blizzard on the enemies and also Lightning Spears. Now, I, I want to preface this. This build is not OP at all by any means, right? If you want to have the most OP build in the game, then you gotta go with your Lightning Spears also. Because sadly, Blizzard is still... Like Blizzard, the company making this game is still mostly on there's one maybe two maybe three builds that are super op and the rest just kind of is not there <coughs> but this is pit level 80 so you can easily farm your materials just fine i also did durial just fine like the tormented durial obviously um i haven't tried lilith but most regular bosses you can do just fine with this build and it is not fully master worked. I think it's uh, like 8 of 12 on most items. So you, maybe if you have better rolls than I had, for example, you can also be a bit luckier with that than I was. <coughs> but that's what it is. But as you can tell, what you do is, very simple to just explain what we actually do with this build. We cast our barriers always, especially the ice armor. We want to have that a lot because it gives us mana regen. Otherwise, we run out of mana fast. And I didn't even activate my elixir either, which helps us. So we just stand there and I keep left mouse button down, which is my blizzard, right? Keep clicking that on the enemies and yeah, I didn't have my berry up there, so I almost died. And we also, whenever it's off cooldown, we cast the ice blades, which is my right mouse button, and we cast the lightning spear. The ice blades help us with cooldown reduction. And the lightning spear just because it's currently just super fucking overpowered. Now one thing you will notice is it takes a while for the damage to ramp up so when you just get to enemies and then you you cast your blizzard you see it doesn't do much damage but then it gets more over time the more blizzards you stack on top of each other the more damage you actually do and the key thing is the blizzard itself doesn't do the damage the blizzard casts ice spikes and that is an aspect you have and that is doing all the damage so let's look at the items so the key thing we absolutely have, obviously, is Shaco. I mean, Shaco, or like Harlequin Crest, is kind of a staple in Sorcerer anyway. I tried the crown, I forgot what it's called, with this, that pulls enemies in when they're crowd control or like frozen. <coughs> um, that's also what people on max roll use, but I died super fast doing that. So I like the Harlequin Crest much better because you survive longer and better. Then we absolutely need the Blue Rose, obviously. Because you have a chance for Ice Spikes to explode twice and Ice Spike damage 350%, cold damage, crit chance, pretty insane. And up to a 30% chance to form an exploding Ice Spike dealing cold damage. Triple this chance if the enemy is frozen, which we also do a lot with our Ice Spikes. Uh, ice Blades, Ice Spikes, Ice Blades, we gotta keep that in mind. Different thing. So the Blue Rose you need to get it from Duriel, I believe. Talrasha's iris iridescent loop is also sadly still necessary in pretty much any sorcerer build these days because you get up to 80% more damage by just exchanging uh, damage types which means fire, lightning and ice or frost, cold, whatever, cold damage. And you do this a lot with your barriers for example, right? With the flame shield which does burning damage. We also have an enchantment which burns, which makes every damage type we do into burning damage fire damage and we have the lightning spear so we always want to have these plus 80 percent this is so strong you kind of have to run it in any sorcerer build sadly that's where we're at with blizzard right now the easiest heal loom is not necessary but it's kind of cool because we gain a lot more movement speed which is nice for uh, <coughs> doing the pit crit chance because we the ice spikes actually do crit damage a lot later especially so um yeah this is what we want to have also more crit damage and crit damage per movement speed bonus. Another key thing you also need is the t bolts will. So you can already tell this is quite an expensive build. To make Blizzard happen at all, you need a lot of items. Um, sadly, it's not the best right now. But it's a lot of fun. I like sort of the AoE stacking um, effect of it. So what is the ICD? 15% up to 20, increase damage while being unstoppable and for 5 seconds after. And you become unstoppable with, with, with the flame shield. And we also have an aspect, which we go over later, where we gain unstoppable. So we gain more damage that way. So t bolts will... Now the Harlequin Crest isn't necessary, but if you're really gonna want to go into higher pit levels, then you need it. But 
the Tharashas, the Blue Rose and the T-Bolts will you definitely need these three uniques, that is what you need for sure. And then when it comes to legendaries, I use a wand here. I was initially running a sword and that's probably still better, but I couldn't find a good one. Because the sword has implicit 70% more crit damage. And you want to have crit damage later especially. And of course a focus. Um, the same thing as always. We have an amulet here. The elemental dominance was a bad roll. I couldn't get a better one. Um, and especially not the master working on it. So if you get better rolls than I have, and I will have... Um, a link below for a proper build guide that has the proper roles you want to have. If you can get better ones than I do, then you're good. Um, I wasn't very lucky here. <clears throat> so let's look at the tempering actually. So on this one, I went for the ice armor duration. I always have one item that has at least the ice armor duration on it because the barrier is very necessary for the sorcerer to survive. You need your barriers up. And especially because this also hit the master working, so I just kind of keep this... Oh, this is just an insane find. I kind of have this on all my builds. And especially also with the life per second, and permanent reduction, maximum life, and the lucky hit to stun. It's just very good. Then, ice spike damage is what you want. I have ice spike damage on here. I have... Um, where is it? Ice spike damage on here. I have ice spike damage on here. And I have ice spike damage on here. Ice spike damage is what you want on your temperings. Outside of that, you can also throw in a little bit of freeze duration, for example, because you will be freezing a lot. Or what do we have? Um, ice blades to be cast, or like double the ice blades, which is great because they apply chill and sometimes freeze and vulnerable on the enemies. And they also reduce your cooldowns. We'll see this in the skills later. So that's great. And same thing here. And I think I also have freeze duration. Yeah, that's pretty much what I went with. That's your temperings. Very simple. Now for the aspects. You definitely need this one, otherwise the build does not work, okay? When you cast Blizzard, it will periodically spawn exploding ice spikes that deal 2500 damage. Your ice spikes chill enemies for 15%. Without this, the build doesn't do any damage. Blizzard itself does not do any damage, okay? Very important. So you need this one. You also need, while ice armor is active, you leave behind exploding ice spikes that deal damage. Your ice spikes deal 50% increased damage to frozen enemies. That applies even outside the ice armor. But ice armor also leaving ice spikes pretty good. And while deep freeze is active, which we don't even have yet, but I might make a build also with deep freeze over the lightning spear, we'll see. Um, they deal more cold damage and they have 50% increased explosion radius. That's the second one we actually want to have. So these three are your damage and you need these for sure. Then on here we have... 25% more damage while you have barrier active, which is great because we have them active always. And this one. Casting ice armor makes you unstoppable and grants 25% damage reduction. Remember, T-Bolts will. We deal more damage and we gain more mana back when we are unstoppable. So with flame shield and the ice armor now, we gain mana, mana and do more damage because we are unstoppable. Very powerful, very key thing. So... I have tried a bunch of things, but this seems to be the best setup so far. Um, when it comes to the gems, very simple here. You want to have the green ones. I forgot the name. Amethyst, I believe. Uh, crit damage, very simple. And life in your armor. And of course, here you have your all resistances because you want to have them kept or armor. Because you want to have these green always, right? Very simple. Um, Alexia wise, you want to have this one most likely. The resourcefulness, because it gives 20% resource cost reduction and more resource, because you will be running out of mana a lot, because you cast the blizzard all the time. Or you go with uh, this one. Crit chance 6% and crit damage. This is more damage, but you will have less mana, so... You can choose, both are good. But these are the elixirs you want. This build, by the way, I think will be much stronger once we get our rune words in the new 2.0 version of Diablo 4. Because then you will most likely be able to auto-cast the blizzards all the time or gain more barriers or whatever or make it stronger. I'm sure there's somewhere an insane blizzard build. For now, this is all we have, so we're gonna work with it. For the skills. Skill 3, there we are. Now again, since we have the Harlequin Crest, it shows 4 on all of these. Um, you can ignore that. You go for the Firebolt and you also want to enchant it. Because enchantment effect down here. <laughs> Direct damage from skills applies up to an additional 9,000 burning damage. That's irrelevant 
what we want is the burning damage because again we want to cycle through fire lightning and cold damage to get our Karasha's buff and also the glyph buffs on the paragons so it isn't about the burning damage at all we just want that the enemies are burning so they get fire damage we also have a buff down here i think it was crippling flames no devouring blaze increased crit damage against burning enemies again nice buff here you can even think of putting free in this if you drop something else we'll, we'll look into this i might make the build even better but that's sort of the working version for now that can do pit 80 just fine i haven't really pushed any higher but 80 was already sort of somewhat tough but i can definitely do 80. if you master work you can maybe go to 90 we'll see um potent warning is mostly gained from our items you don't really need it but it also doesn't hurt because um resistances then we have of course glass cannon as always we have the flame shield we go with the shimmering flame shield because it also heals us teleport damage reduction obviously and the shimmering ice armor to give us um, cooldown and mana or easy it says five on these again yeah I put one into them it says five because i have the harlequin crest so then oh yeah one into elemental human i missed that a lucky hit critical strikes have up to seven percent chance to reset the cooldown of one of your defensive skills this actually happens quite a lot to me which is nice because you need your barriers up all the time otherwise the sorcerer just dies super fast then we put one into lightning spear and one into the this one because it increases crit chance on the lightning spear which is nice but also we go with the ice blades and especially this one what this does is you cast your ice blades when they hit enemies it reduces 0.5 seconds of cooldown and the summoned ice blades means 20 percent of these 0.5 seconds are applied to all your other skills so basically that just helps you because you have a lot of ice blades just helps you to constantly Keep your cooldowns low. That's what you want. This is pretty much what you always take, right? Mana shield. You always want to have this protection for more barrier. Damage reduction against elites. You also go with Ice Veal because your barriers last longer. You want to have this for sure. 24% increased duration. And Conjuration Mastery we pick also up because we do conjure a lot of things. The Ice Blades and the Lightning Spear are conjurations. Then the Blizzard. You put one in this, again, sadly, in Diablo, there's no point in actually putting more into these, but that's where we are. Uh, increased damage to frozen enemies, and of course, duration. Longer, you're gonna have this longer, because the longer it runs, the more ice spikes are hitting enemies. In the flames, the more damage, as we don't really need this, but we want to get here. Crit strike damage against burning, so we do more crit damage. Because they, they are all burning, even if they do, if they gain cold damage. Cold damage. More damage on frost skills, simple. Uh, cold damage to vulnerable enemies, again, simple. And you deal increased damage to chill, because we chill pretty much all of them. Any blizzard chills them right away. And some of them are frozen. We also take this one. Hitting enemies with shock skills increases your crit chance by 1%. Resets upon getting a crit chance. And deal 6% less damage for 5 seconds after being critically struck by your shock skills, which happens a lot with the lightning spear. And funnily enough, we actually don't take a frost um key passive we take wheels mastery because when you critically strike an enemy with a shock skill you become charged and take 25 percent less damage and we do crit a lot with the lightning spear right crit strikes have 10 percent chance to cause the damage to arc as lightning damage to another nearby enemy or if there are no other targets you hit the target again for 250 percent of the damage so this is again more focused on the lightning but I like the combination of both. This again is a lightning blizzard build, right? So that's that's the main idea of it. I was thinking of this, but it seemed like the, the wheels mastery was just stronger, especially because of the damage reduction. But I'm gonna make a blizzard only build as well. We'll see how that works. We're probably gonna go with this. So subscribe and like to be notified when that build comes out. Now for the Paragon. Um, we actually have quite a lot of bots, so let's go over this. The first one we want to have is Winter, very simple, because whenever you chill or freeze an enemy, you deal 4% increased cold damage for 10 seconds, up to 18%. Just very strong. Winter, obviously, right? Um, you can tell, by the way, I didn't even pick up most of the legendary nodes, so it doesn't really matter which board you take here. We just go through it fast to get more glyphs in, as you can tell, except for down here. But um, check the build below, like the build planner, to see which, which boards these are exactly. Elementalist, this is basically an addition on top of Talrasha's loop, that ring. The same thing, you switch your damage types, that gives you more damage. 
very simple, nothing crazy. And over here we have the control. Control is very important. More damage to slowed or chilled enemies <clears throat> and more damage to frozen. And 65% more damage to crawl control. What this build exceptionally does exceptionally well is when you are bossing, as soon as they are staggered, basically a stun trigger sort of hit them, and then they can't move. It says at the bottom they are at the top they are staggered, then you really melt them. Like the damage is supercharged once they are staggered. So you want to have them staggered, and then you keep hitting your blizzard on them, you, like you stack on top of them, and then they're getting shredded. Now you would have also noticed, actually I mentioned this at the end when we go over weaknesses. <clears throat> we actually pick up also this damage reduction from elites because Sorcerer is just very squishy. And we have Unleash, which is still debatable but I kind of liked it. Uh, after spending 50 mana you deal 8% increased damage and gain more mana regen. The mana regen is really important because we are out of mana pretty much all the time so I went with it. There might be a better version somewhere in there. Maybe we drop this for something else. Maybe. But for now, this is the build that works just fine. And of course, with Richard Fade, you deal bonus damage to vulnerable enemies equal to 20% of the total amount of your bonus damage. Maximum 60. Current bonus 60%. Let me go down here. This is Icefall, I believe. Yes. Frost skills deal 25% increased damage to vulnerable and doubled if they're frozen. Vulnerable and frozen. More damage to chilled. Also very nice. And of course, here we have the Frostbite. And it means you have 15% reduced damage for you for you to five to you for five seconds. God. When they are no longer frozen. And you also gain 70% damage to chill enemies. So the frostbite effect, the additional bonus is okay, but I like the damage to chilled. 70% damage to chill enemies. That is kind of crazy. Over here we went with destruction. And as you can tell, we picked up all the well, in, no, we picked up all the decks around this. Because as you can tell, it gives us 194% increased crit damage. That does shred quite hard. So you want to pick up all the dex points around this thing, especially these ones, right? The blue ones here. And then we go up here. We actually pick up a legendary note again, Elemental Summoner. Your Conjuration skills have 10% reduced cooldown or mana cost. There's the bonus damage, which is 60% up here. And we go with the Ice Spike. Uh, you gain 20% crit chance on the ice spikes, the stalagmite, and 90% ice spike damage for each int we picked up here. So, as you can tell, what we do mostly is the elementalist, you kind of have to take always with the tarashas. Then we go with ice spike damage, cold vulnerable damage, frozen damage, and a little bit of conjuration damage because we, we do conjure a lot of things. Now, let's talk about some weaknesses of the build. Whoops. The biggest problem the build has is it has to ramp, right? Meaning, as I said earlier, when you come forth to enemies, you sort of have to find a position where you will be staying. And you have to lure in the enemies to come there. So you are very vulnerable to these crossbow things, these, these shoot at you, because you can't really move your damage around a lot. It's sort of at this one point where you do your damage with your blizzard. And it has to stack, like the stacking of the blizzards on top of each other is what really does the damage. This is great against bosses that don't move much, bad against bosses that do move much. Um, for example, this build is exceptionally well or great at the Infernal Hordes because they pile up on top of you all the time. So just keep casting your blizzards and also against the end bosses because they mostly stay at the same position. But it's bad against pit bosses that move a lot. Or in pit general, the pitting is not that crazy because you want to go through it fast. And with the blizzard, you have a you have a setup, right? You have to go there if you cast your your um, ice armor and your ice blades and your lightning spear, and then you keep keep uh, pressing the left mouse button to keep casting blizzards on top of the enemies. But until that damage rains in, that's a bit slow, and especially if they push you out or enemies move out of the damage area. Then you have to reset up the entire damage again. So it's not the easiest build to play because you really have to know where the enemies are coming from, what they are doing, where they are sitting and what... yeah. And you have to put the damage on top of them. You sort of have to lure them in as well. So that's a little bit of a, of a weakness of it. And of course the weakness itself is that it's not overpowered <laughs> uh, like other builds. And 
yeah, the Lightning Spear is just way stronger, but I like it. It's a different build. I mean, I'm here about off-meta builds, and it can do the pit 80 just fine, and most uh, tormented bosses. I haven't tried the lift, but maybe the just the Blizzard version, version is also better. We'll see. But this is a Lightning Blizzard version, and I like this a lot because it sort of covers both. I like mixing the damage types because we have to do this anyway because of the Tarashas. Right. So, yeah. Um... And another weakness I would say is you run out of mana real fast. Your cooldowns are mostly fine, especially on the barriers. But mana runs out fast, so you definitely need the... I think you want to run this one all the time. To keep your resources up, your resource cost reduction as well. So you can keep stacking your blizzards, especially if you have to move. You can reposition and recast a blizzard somewhere else. Again, Infernal Hearts is really great, because you just cast all your blizzards all the time. Um, it did also pretty well in Nightmare Dungeons. Um, Pit is okay, and some bosses are really good. Like, you can really melt tormented bosses fast with this. If they stand in your blizzard a lot, bosses that move fast are a bit of a problem. Anyway, that's it for today. Let me know what you think of this build, things you would want to change, or think this sucks, or you think whatever, I don't know. <laughs> Just tell me below in the comments. And I will see you guys in the next video, which will be the regular blizzard, just blizzard without lightning. And we're also going to do a, a meteor build, which is probably going to suck right now, but we'll see. And maybe we'll also do the fireball, I don't know. But if you want to have your sorcerer builds, I'm your man. Until then, have a good time.